Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this tip I want to talk to you about adjusting your valves. Now adjusting your valves is probably the second most important thing you should be doing for your bug to keep it alive and running all these years. Um, usually you want to do a valve adjustment about every 6,000 miles. Um, but on the precaution side, I usually, after every 3,000 miles when I change my oil, uh, I'll just check the valves just in case and see if they're tight or not. Uh, now we're going to be working on a 1972 bug and the 72 bug has a 1600 dual port motor uh, and those valves you want to adjust to six thousandths. So what you're going to want to do is probably go to the auto parts store and get yourself a feeler gauge so you can read six thousandths. Um, if you have a 40 horsepower motor, uh, a lot of the shop manuals are telling you to adjust the valves uh, eight thousandths on the intake and twelve thousandths on the exhaust. I've also had success with eight, eight thousandths on the intake and ten thousandths on the exhaust. Uh, if you have the 36 horsepower motor, the, 50, uh, the, the 1950s bugs, uh, the manuals are telling you to adjust those at four thousandths across the board. Uh, but now they're saying also if you rebuild those motors with the new valves and whatnot, um, they're telling you now to go to six thousandths because they're expanding more. So uh, I've fished around with that. I've had success with five or six, four. I really haven't had a problem just yet. So five is usually what I like right in the middle. But um, anyways, back to the 72 bug, 1600 motor, which is what most of you, you guys are going to be running with out there. Uh, you're going to want to get yourself, like I said, the feeler gauge. Uh, you need your 13 wrench, box wrench, or open end, uh, flathead screwdriver, and some gaskets and some Permatex. Uh, basically, once we take the valve covers off, you're going to want to change the gaskets and put some Permatex on there so to, to seal it nice and tight so they don't leak. But um, I'm going to show you step by step on how to do this. Now, you're going to want to do this when your engine is cold. So if you're doing an oil change, I would recommend running the car, getting the oil nice and warm, drain the oil so it comes out nice and, nice and flush, and nice and uh, rich and fluid and comes right out, whatever that means, right? <laughs> uh, so just to get all the oil out of it because it's nice and warm. Um, and then let it sit for about an hour or so, maybe even two hours. The engine has to be cool when you do your valves and then uh, you should be good to go. If you're working on the floor, we're gonna be doing this on the, on the lift, of course. If you're working on the floor when you're doing your valves, uh, I have uh, really good success when I take actually the, the back tires off, because then I can sit upright and I can face the valves right in front of me uh, while the car is up off the ground a little bit, and then uh, I can work with the valves there, and uh, it seems to be a little bit easier. Okay, enough of my babbling, uh, let's get to work. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your uh, distributor and your rotor is uh, pointing to number one cylinder. We want to be on the number one rocker first. Uh, so basically I just get my, uh, I got a 30 millimeter wrench here, big guy, and I will go counterclockwise until I get to number one. I'll tell you why I go counterclockwise in a second. Now I mark my pulleys, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit closer here, but I mark my pulleys uh, on number one where there's a notch and then basically halfway around I mark it again directly across so basically say 12 and 6 is where I notch the pulley so I know where I am uh, when it comes to uh, gauging what cylinder I'm pointing to so I'm just gonna go make sure I'm on number one To make sure you're on number one cylinder, I pop the cap off, my distributor cap off, and look at where my rotor is pointing. And as you can see, I'm pointing to number three. This is no way number one. So when your notches are at the, let me show you here. When your notches are showing at the top of the split in the block, you could either be on number one cylinder or number three cylinder. As, as you can see by looking at our rotor, we're on number three cylinder so I have to go around one more time to get on number one and like I said I like to go counterclockwise because when I'm doing my valves if I go to number one and then go counterclockwise to go halfway around to say hey that notch then I'd be on number two you go another halfway around then you're on number three then the other halfway around then you're on number four so it just makes it a little bit easier okay so I'm at the top point and my rotor is pointing to number one. So that's how I know pretty well that I'm on number one cylinder. To check for sure, 
what you got to do is you might have to get another person uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rock this back and forth just like that and when you have your valve covers off when you look at the valves the number one rockers should not be moving if they are moving then you're still you're not on the right cylinder yet so uh, we're going to check underneath right now I'm going to rock this back and forth and then you're going to be able to see that the number one rockers are not moving okay so we're going to take our valve covers off now and uh, one of the easy ways I like to take my valve covers off is you can see there's a bracket that holds the cover uh, what I like to do is get under here with the rag or a shirt, rip shirt, whatever there's a little trick I found pull it off just like that and that's how the valve cover should now come off. Sometimes they're a little stubborn, they might get stuck, so you might have to get a screwdriver in behind here and pull it off. Okay, so I'm going to get my big wrench and start rocking the crank. As you can see, number one rockers are not, number one rockers are not moving. That's how you know for sure that you're on number one. Okay, so here's how we adjust your valves. First, you're going to want to do is you want to break loose the nuts here on the end with your 13 millimeter wrench box end or if you want to use a socket 13 millimeter socket sometimes they're a little stubborn and they don't want to break off might be a little awkward here when you turn and you got the heat box in the way so basically uh, what I did is I, I broke them off and you see there's a screw head in the center and that gauge is how tight or how loose your valves are so basically you want to go by like the number on a clock and to kind of feel around, feel around and see you know exactly how loose or tight it is. Usually if it's a little too loose you just go one number clockwise and then that will pretty much tighten it up for the most part. They're usually never that far off. Okay so this is a little too tight so I want to back it off just a little bit. Let me put my wrench down. Back it off just a little bit. Okay. And You want to feel a little bit of drag. That's a little bit better. Go another number. That feels good. Just a little bit of drag. Then you should be good to go. Take that out. If you want to gauge what's a little bit of drag, what's I like them just a little bit loose and I'd rather more loose than tight. But what if you want to do is you can go up to the next valve uh, gauge on your feeler gauge and go to say 0 .007 and feel around with that and then put that gauge in there and if it's tight going in or if it goes in tight and it still goes in but it's it's still a little tight then you're pretty good then that's you're basically in the right realm there so um, that's if you just you know little anal and you just want to try to get it as perfect as possible but you just want a little bit of a drag to it that's still a little loose I'll go up another number okay that's a little bit better now I see the drag you can even hear it and feel it Try a little more. No, I see that's too tight. Now I can't even move it. See? So back off another number. And that's that's good. You just feel a little bit of drag. I'd rather have it a little loose than a little tight. And you, as long as you feel a drag, you're good to go. Take that out. Put your feeler gauge down temporarily. Get your wrench. I usually put them in between kind of like that. Sometimes you might have to just move the nut a little bit okay and make sure you hold the screw straight where it is but sometimes you might tighten this nut and it'll move the screw head at the same time and then you don't want that now you're back to being tight again like I said sometimes those those nuts are a little too tight on those screws but start tightening it this one I had to loosen a bunch because it was really stuck on that screw okay now it's starting to get tight Oh, see, I moved just a little bit there. And this nut was way off. Okay. Snug it down. Okay. And get your feeler gauge back out. Do a test. And perfect. Just a little bit of drag. Okay.